Hi everybody, it's Dandruff with your new Scorchers for Thursday, July 19th, 2018. Welcome to the show today. I cannot stop playing Minecraft. The aquatic update is really good, and I hope you're having fun with it too. But enough about games, let's get down to business and talk about news. Timestamps along with reference links for all stories today can be found in the description. Today's top news is actually not about a video game, but instead, one of my sources. And no, I'm not going to bitch about Kotaku for two and a half minutes. VG247, actually, has decided to drop support for the independent DRM-free game store, GOG. I have mentioned GOG a lot here on my show in the past, and I've mentioned VG247 a couple of times. GOG recently tweeted out a picture of a Postal 2 DLC promotion with a grave stating Games Journalism Committed Suicide August 28th, 2014, the day Gamergate began. This tweet has since been deleted. VG247 has decided to pull their support for the site stating Gamergate has destroyed lives and linked to a BuzzFeed article about a son killing his father. As terrible of a tragedy as that is, What's it got to do with Gamergate? I would consider myself pro-Gamergate, and I don't think this is a left or right issue, but it has to do with better ethics and transparency in games journalism. Anyone else who tried to cram other shit onto it had an agenda that they were pushing and lost focus on what Gamergate was really about. By the way, I'd like to mention that this shit has been over for quite some time now. Nobody really cares about Gamergate anymore. What's done is done, and now people are more scrutinizing of their sources as they should be. Since this has happened, as I mentioned, GOG has delayed deleted the tweet and issued an apology. VG247 has yet to make a response. Whiskers was so angered by this that he decided to no longer use VG247 as a source until they issue an apology of their own, and I agree with this decision. We will not be linking to VG247 any longer other than this story until they grow the hell up and learn what Gamergate was actually about. Supporting it does not mean you support murderers or anti-feminist behavior or any of that bullshit. I started this show in part because of Gamergate, and while I may not be a journalist, I wanted to lead by example and try to give people clear information as to what is going on in the video game industry. If you have anything you'd like to share in regards to this story, please share your thoughts in the comments below. Looking for something to play next weekend? How about giving Hammond, the newest hero to come to Overwatch, a try? Blizzard is hosting a free weekend next week just after our furry hamster friend joins the roster. In release announcements, the free update to enter the gungeon called Advanced Gungeons and Dragons is now out for PC, PS4, and Xbox One. Here we have a gorgeous looking red Spider-Man themed PS4 Pro with pre-orders opening today and it comes with a one terabyte hard drive. Finally, I saved the best for last. Here is the Call of Duty Black Ops 4 mystery box. The mystery is who thought it was a good idea to give Call of Duty players a fucking puzzle. No fooling, there is a 1000 piece jigsaw puzzle in this thing. I will have to say though, the iron on patches and fig pins are pretty cool though. Right on into update news with Space Engineers getting an overhaul to its multiplayer mode, which now supports double the amount of people, which is now up to 32, and developer Keen Software says it will even support 64 if people focus on shooting rather than engineering. The update also adds women to further customize your avatar. Moving on into some good news about PUBG, but it's actually not about the game itself. PUBG Corp is donating $1 million to the charity of choice among a bunch of popular streamers and pro league players. The list includes Doc Disrespect, Ninja, Shroud, Josh OG, and Virus. The event takes place on July 27th at 10 a.m. Eastern Time on the official Twitch PUBG channel. Next up, we have one of our favorite returning guests, the DRM system known as Denuvo. No, they're not very popular, but we seem to talk about them quite a bit. It's been confirmed the upcoming Monster Hunter World and Resident Evil 2 for PC will use Denuvo. So if this influences whether or not you buy the game, consider yourself warned. Don't let that be your final decision though, a lot of games with Denuvo implemented end up getting it removed eventually. And for anyone who has said DRM does not harm paying customers, we turn to Sonic Mania Plus. The devious DRM is causing the game to slow down, and for a Sonic game where you want to go fast, this is a problem. For a game that would run on a Sega Genesis, people with Intel Core 2 Duos are facing problems running it. The problem is caused by poor implementation of the DRM rather than just the DRM itself. Hopefully Sega finds a way to fix it like they did the Always Online requirement from last year. Todd Howard is our Lord and Savior, and when he commands something, we all should take a knee and listen well. I promise Whiskers didn't write this part. Mr. Howard said during an interview it would be his personal preference to not remaster Morrowind. This is really unfortunate too because Morrowind is a 16 year old game and its age is more than showing. Updating it to a modern engine, even the Skyrim engine, would not only improve the graphics but also improve mod support. Plus it would be an easy way to make money because not much has to go into development of the game and Bethesda could use that money for things like tuna, balls of yarn, or catnip. 
Daddy Todd recently said that they would stop making Skyrim ports if people stopped buying them. So by that logic, if more people started showing interest in a Morrowind remaster, then they would have to make it eventually, right? Send Mr. Howard a tweet if you want to see this done, but please don't harass him. Finally today, we are going to end with two men in Japan getting arrested and Pokemon Go is involved somehow. For our first one, a 37-year-old man has been apprehended and charged with violating Nintendo's trademark. He was selling Pokemon Go Pluses, the wristband accessory for for the game that was modified to automatically spin any Pokestops nearby. Honestly, this doesn't seem like that big of a deal to me, but Niantic has been consistent in their overbearing protection, so this isn't surprising. The man claims he did not think what he was doing was illegal. This last one is not so innocent. A 51-year-old man has been arrested for stalking. He claims he was just standing out in front of a 33-year-old woman's house playing Pokemon Go. However, she has security camera footage of him walking around her house between the months of May and June multiple times. So needless to say, this does not seem like an isolated incident, especially when you consider authorities had already warned the man back in 2009 for following the same person. Remember to be safe while playing Pokemon Go, try to have a friend with you if you can, and don't forget, you do have a phone with you if you need to call police. Sound the alarm! It's time for tomorrow's game releases. For PC, The Miskatonic and Jelly Wrestle. For Xbox One, Frost. For Nintendo Switch, Hiroki, VSR, Void Space Racing, and Spheroids. Thank you very much everybody, this has been News Cartridge. I am Dandruff, I will see you tomorrow. And I won gold at a weather forecasting event. I beat the reigning champion! Her name was Haley. Click up here to watch the bonus episode for today's show. Click down here to watch yesterday's episode, which was about the Minecraft 1.13 aquatic update being released for Java. Yay! Both of those links are in the description down below, and click over here to subscribe to my wonderful, wonderful channel. Thank you. See you tomorrow for Friday. Bye-bye.